In this lecture we will discuss formation of imine, properties, reactions, and mechanism. Imines are the nitrogen analogs of aldehydes and ketones that contain a C and double bond instead of a CO double bond. For example, the corresponding imine of this aldehyde will be this, called aldamine, and that of ketone will be like this, called ketamine. But the general term used for these is imine. Imines are also called Schiff bases, named after Hugo Schiff, a German chemist who first described their formation. For example, this carbonyl, which can be aldehyde or ketone, reacts with ammonia derivative, denoted here as NH2Z, in the presence of acid catalyst, denoted as HA, to form imine. Notice that, the starting materials, aldehyde or ketone and ammonia derivative, and the products, imine and water, are in equilibrium. Applying Le Chatelier's principle, this equilibrium can be driven forward towards the desired imine product, by removing the water as the imine is formed, so as to prevent the reverse reaction from happening. In practice this is often done by using a drying agent, such as magnesium sulfate or molecular sieves, or by isolating the water with a Dean Stark trap. Recall that the carbonyl carbon of aldehydes and ketones is an excellent electrophile and can undergo addition reactions with good nucleophiles. To speed up the reaction, mild acid catalyst is used so that acid makes carbonyl carbon into better electrophile by breaking the pi bond towards oxygen. Thus we can say, acid catalysis speed up the nucleophilic addition. In the first step of mechanism, the carbonyl group is protonated, rendering it more electrophilic. The amine attacks the protonated carbonyl carbon to generate a tetrahedral intermediate. The positively charged nitrogen of this tetrahedral intermediate is deprotonated to form a compound called carbonylamine. Recall that the conjugate acid is always a better leaving group than its corresponding base. Water is the conjugate acid of hydroxyl anion base. The OH group of carbonylamine is protonated, thereby converting it into an excellent leaving group H2O. The elimination of water is assisted by mesomeric push by nitrogen lone pair. Thus water leaves, and a C and pi bond forms. This step forms a minium ion. Deprotonation of the positively charged nitrogen gives us the neutral imine. The HA being acid catalyst is of course regenerated at the end. This mechanism can be divided into two parts. 1. The first three steps protonation, addition and deprotonation, produce an intermediate called a carbonylamine and 2. The last three steps, protonation elimination and deprotonation, convert the carbonylamine into an imine. The first letters of these steps, that is, P, A, D, P, E, D, makes an mnemonic. Pad ped to help remembering these steps. Imine formation involves acid catalyst, therefore pH of the reaction medium is crucial. The optimum pH for imine formation is around 4.5. At high pH, that is, if no acid catalyst is used. Step 1 and step 4 of the reaction are affected, and reaction rate decreases. At low pH, that means if too much acid is used. Most of the amine molecules will be protonated and affects the step 2 of the reaction. Thus under high acidic conditions, amine nucleophile gets protonated, due to which nucleophilicity of amine N is lost. Thus optimum pH is 4.5. As a result, 
Care must be taken to ensure optimal pH of the solution during imine formation. Imine formation is reversible, and most imines can be hydrolyzed back to the amine and the ketone or aldehyde. The principle of microscopic reversibility states that the reverse reaction taking place under the same conditions should follow the same pathway but in reverse order. Therefore, the mechanism for hydrolysis of an imine is simply the reverse of the mechanism for its formation. Other ammonia derivatives such as hydroxylamine and hygrazine also react with aldehydes and ketones to give imine products. Consider this general reaction of imine formation. The identity of Z will determine the reagent which will determine the product imine. If Z is H, reagent is called ammonia, and the product is called imine. If Z is primary alkyl group R, reagent is called primary amine, and the product is called imine or shift base. If Z is hydroxyl group OH, reagent is called hydroxylamine, and the product is called oxum. If Z is NH2, reagent is called hygrazine, and the product is called hygrazone. If Z is NHPH, reagent is called phenylhygrazine, and the product is called phenylhygrazone. If Z is NHC double bonded ONH2, the reagent is called semicarbazide, and the product is called semicarbazone. These derivatives are useful both as starting materials for further reactions and for characterization and identification of the original carbonyl compounds. Oxymes, semicarbazones, and phenylhygrazones are often solid compounds with characteristic melting points. The melting point of derivative of unknown carbonyl can be compared with that in library. And if matched, we can be certain about the correct identification of the compound. If an amine and an aldehyde or ketone group are present on the same molecule, connected through a carbon chain, then a cyclic amine formation is most likely, particularly if a five- or six-membered ring can be formed. Consider, for example, the formation of this cyclic imine in the presence of acid catalyst. To understand the formation, let us denote the carbon starting from carbonyl carbon as C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5, which is bonded to NH2. We can redraw this compound so that carbonyl and NH2 are shown near to each other. The same sequence of steps, as in the case of intermolecular case, happens here. That is protonation followed by nucleophilic addition of nitrogen lone pair, to form tetrahedral intermediate with positive charge on nitrogen. Then other steps like deprotonation, protonation of OH to change it into good leaving group H2O, followed by elimination of water and deprotonation of positively charged nitrogen leads to the formation of cyclic imine. The following examples show some typical imine forming reactions. Cyclohexanone reacts with ammonia to form cyclohexanone imine. Cyclopentanone reacts with aniline to form cyclopentanone phenylamine. Benzaldehyde reacts with methylamine to form benzaldehyde methylamine. Similarly, this ketone reacts with methylamine in the presence of paratolvine sulfonic acid to form this imine. Cyclopentanone reacts with cyclopentylamine to form this imine. This ketone also contains an amino group. Therefore in the presence of acid catalyst, it will undergo intramolecular cyclic imine formation. To understand the mechanism, Denote the carbons as C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
and redraw the molecule so that keto group and amino group are shown close to each other. The intramolecular reaction shall follow the same sequence of steps as described earlier for intermolecular imine formation. The protonation of carbonyl and addition of NH2 will form this intermediate, wherein nitrogen attains positive charge. This is followed by deprotonation, protonation of OH, elimination of H2O and deprotonation of nitrogen to form this cyclic imine. We know that hydrolysis of imine is reverse of imine formation. We can do the retrosynthetic analysis of a particular imine to find out the reactants that formed it. For example in this imine, we know CN double bond is formed in place of CO double bond of aldehyde or ketone. We also know, before amine formation, this would have been carbonyl carbon and this amine nitrogen with two hydrogens. Therefore we can say, this comes from nucleophilic amine part, and this from electrophilic carbonyl part. Therefore the precursors of this amine can be derived by retrosynthetic analysis. The arrow here is called retrosynthetic arrow, which implies that, what is on the left is derived from that is on the right. In this case, it can be done simply by breaking the CN double bond and restoring carbonyl and amine group by adding doubly bonded oxygen on carbon and adding two hydrogens on nitrogen. This gives cyclohexanone and cyclopentylamine. Likewise retrosynthetic analysis of this imine gives cyclohexylamine and cyclopentanone. This cyclic imine depicts intramolecular imine formation. Retrosynthetic analysis gives the cyclohexanone with amino alkyl chain at alpha carbon. The carbons can be traced by denoted with numbers. Similarly in this cyclic imine retrosynthesis can be done like this. Carbons can be denoted C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Carbonyl will be restored on C2. In this imine, this must be carbonyl part and this amine part. Retrosynthesis gives aniline and acetaldehyde. Like before, retrosynthetic analysis of this cyclic imine can be done to find the precursors. The carbons can be traced as usual by denoting with numbers or letters. In case of this oxum derivative retrosynthesis can be done in similar way. Breaking CN double bond gives 4,4-dimethylcyclohexanone and hydroxylamine. This hydrazone on retrosynthesis shows that it has been formed from this hydrazine and this aldehyde. 